That's disgusting, but kind of funny still. <laughs> Alternatively, you could just give us some sausages. <laughs> Hello, <laughs> everyone. We're, was, was that already in the... Oh, it was already online, wasn't it? Well, we did... The, your, your initial joke wasn't, um, wasn't included. We started well, talking about the sausages. We started out with uh, they, we started out hearing um, smelly go smelly go. That's disgusting, but also kind of funny. Also, uh, okay, well then let's recap. We were talking about dog rape. <laughs> well, no, no, Gio was. <laughs> well, don't involve me in this. We're talking about dog rape. Why is Jared not here? Oh. Uh... Whoa. Sorry about that. I'll be right back. Yeah, that was Computers by Clowncore. Oh. Hmm. Wait, did he go away? <laughs> did his phone ring? What happened? Yes, yes his phone rang and oh. he had to settle down oh. like for a minute or so. Okay. Well, while he does that, um, uh, Falco in the, uh, in the, in the chat. No, this, this won't be, uh, how to emotionally abuse a girl into submission. Not again. <laughs> wow, that, that really sounds bad considering what we... Uh... <laughs> so if you have no idea what we have, <laughs> what episode that refers to. <laughs> Go back a couple weeks if you're new. Um, well, a couple episodes. Anyways, this is Awaken in the Dream. Uh, by a guy. Oh no, sorry, not by. It's not by him, it's with Paul uh, Levy. Who, who, who. And apparently S S Sting loves his work. We don't know which Sting. Well, are there two Stings? Smelly literally explained this to us before we went live. There's the wrestler and the, the, and the, uh, the guy from the police. Uh, yes, I'm, I'm aware of that. I just, you know, want to repeat it so that the audience knows, in case they don't. Why did you act like you didn't know? That's weird. Um, it's called scripting. This isn't scripted. God damn it, Micro. Anyway, I'm pretty sure that this is the thing that uh, everybody knows, which is the singer guy. Bees? So this uh, this uh, website. Would you care to read the description of this website? Um, yeah, just uh, just wait a second before I do that. I need my suicide knife. <laughs> oh, wait, have wait, a special knife for one that. again. It's always good to have a dedicated suicide knife. Huh. Oh god, yeah. A radical synthesis of the realms of quantum physics, alchemy, shaman shamanism, Buddhism, Kabbalah, mystri mystical Christianity. And the works of C.G. Jung and Philip K. Dick. How, how do we, um, how do you combine all those things? I have no idea. Why is Drugs, one of, probably. Probably. Why is one of them, um, a, a science fiction author? We, we don't know. So. Should we go to the about, should we start up about and read who will do what? What uh, Paul thinks this this is all about? Yeah, let's start with the about page. Uh... Oh, oh, you didn't have a different picture, huh? So now it's just like little you and thank you, little you, thank you. This one is small, but that one is far away. <laughs> oh wait, so you do have a different picture? That's this is so, so like, I don't like the fact that he's there twice. <laughs> like, it feels weird. Okay, this isn't, this is about, this isn't, oh, so, okay, this isn't actually an about page. It's a biography of him, rather than the about of the website. <laughs> Which, you know, is what the site is supposed to be. Well, the about section is supposed to be. <sighs> People are so stupid. Like, yes. my God. No, okay. So, yeah, somebody at my work just... 
we have an old Sega Rally uh, cabinet, and I've been I've been working on the boards, like replacing capacitors, and somebody just put a resistor instead of a capacitor on there, and then put power to the board, and it exploded. Oh, and I'm just like, dude, do you realize you could have destroyed this 35 year old arcade cabinet, like just being a jackass? Sorry, I'm just I no, just that, can't that believe is, that is pretty stupid. Like those two things yeah. don't look. <laughs> they don't. They don't look the same. They don't. They one of them literally has wires coming like uh, rods coming out of either end, and the other one has them both coming out of the fucking bottom. How do you mistake them? Sorry. No, that that's. So let's move on. So something. Let's move on. So something auto. Something else that's stupid. Yeah, exactly. More stupid shit from other stupid sources. And a... I saw that you pointed out the sting thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I wish I knew which sting. We're just gonna assume it's both. I'm got until further notice. Is it the it, the stings are in a quantum superposition? We don't know which one of them it is. <laughs> we don't know if it's the wrestler or the lead singer or the police. Yeah. Maybe it's maybe it's an alternate universe amalgam of both of them. <laughs> He's the same guy in a different. You know, thinking about it, there actually must exist a universe where Sting the wrestler and Sting the lead singer, the police, are the same person. He wrestles as he plays. <laughs> Born in 1956, Paul Levi grew up in Yonkers, New York. Uh, Yonkers. Yonkers. That's that's Is not a, that's creator? not a real name. That's actually a real. Well, I think it is a real place. Yonkers. Yeah. Is, isn't that directly north of New York City? If it I remember correctly. Like a mid stove. I don't know. Don't get me lying about it. I couldn't tell you shit about the boroughs or any of that garbage. But I can pretty, tell you that sure. Yonkers. Yonkers is definitely the name of a Tyler the Creator song, and I only know of it because of that song. <laughs> yes, I'm right. It's directly, basically directly north of the Bronx. <laughs> it sounds like, it sounds like a mint stove. Like, 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 so, like. You know, Ian Bonkers. Yeah, yeah, it's like, <laughs> yeah. But anyway, uh, in the mid-70s, he went to college at what was then called the University of New York at Birmingham. Wait. Binghamton? Okay, at Binghamton. Now called Binghamton University, receiving degrees in both economics and studio art. Oh, but he talks about quantum physics, and neither one of those are physics related. Um, yeah, he's, he's a doctor in the same way as Dr. Pepper is one. <laughs> exactly. Oh, he would give you about diabetes? <laughs> he's, got, he's got his degree in giving diabetes, not, not in studying it, just in giving it. His highest degree is 96 Fahrenheit. <laughs> <laughs> I love that you used Fahrenheit. Well, yeah, you went to an American school. Exactly. Well, oh my God. When he graduated college, he stopped his studies in economics and pursued his career in art, moving out to the Bay Area where he was both making and teaching art. Fair enough. In 1981, due to an intense personal trauma, he had a life-changing spiritual awakening in which he began to recognize the dreamlike nature of reality. Let, let, me, let me translate this. In 1981, I got into a bar fight and I was hit in the head with a baseball bat. <laughs> and since then, I've been starting to make shit up. <laughs> During the first year of his spiritual emergence, Paul was hospitalized a number of times and was told he was having a severe psychotic break from reality. Yeah, that's, that's, that's what it sounds like. Much to, his right, doesn't it? Yeah. Much to his surprise, he was m misdiagnosed as having a chemical imbalance and was informed that he had, uh, had what was then called manic, de manic depression, now called uh, bipolar disorder. Yeah. And that he would have to uh, live with his illness for the rest of his life and would need to take medication till his dying breath. That, that's not necessarily true, but okay. Well, wait. 
Wait, so is, is that going through a oh. spiritual awakening that that would lead him away from his supposed problems, or is he still going to have to take medication for his problems? Oh, um, Very- I think I think he's not going to take the medication. Oh, that's, also, that's, also, that's, that's hold on, that's not that's not the important point here. What is important what, is what you just said in the chat. Oh yeah, my brother's real name is Bruce Wayne. Yeah. My middle name is Wayne. Uh, so is my father's middle name. So is okay. my grandpa's okay, middle name. But I, I once knew a dude name. called Wayne. I, I once knew a dude called Wayne Bruce. We all called <laughs> him Man Bet. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what kind of redneck ass bullshit is a family middle name? Okay, can some? Is, is there anybody I out there one. that has ever heard? Oh my god! Yeah. Tell, tell that to uh, Abraham J. Simpson and uh, Homer J. Simpson <laughs> and Bartholomew uh, J. Simpson. Okay. okay. When you find out in what season six or seven that his middle name is J, like J A Y. Yeah. That is that was one of my five, favorite. I think about it. No, like, I do middle have... names. Middle names are perfectly normal. Yeah, here here in Denmark, but <sighs> not like anywhere weird. else. Yeah. Apart from in, maybe in Russia, where your middle name is your father's first name. Well, that's weird. I mean, actually, think, no, it kind of makes sense. My, mid, my middle name is like. Thinking I don't have a middle name since there's no such thing as middle names in Denmark. Technically, it's a, a second first name, but whatever. See, I would piss off my kid, my, my, my the third generation down by, my, by naming my kid the same thing. Like, if his name was. Uh, like, if our last name was Michaels, I would name him Michael. So that by the third generation, it would be Michael, Michael, Michaels. <laughs> let, let, let's be honest, Micro. Your middle name sounds like a washing detergent. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> it, it does. <laughs> you know what my... Hold on. Smelly, you know what my middle name is. It's the, what I used as the last name on Facebook. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I know. That's why I'm laughing. Okay. Because it totally fucking does. That is a, that is a truth, and I had not actually thought about that till now. I mean, it is also a brand of washing machine, so that I kind of works. <laughs> yeah. I didn't oh, even know shit. that, so... I, me neither. That well, it's obscure. It's situation. obscure. I don't think even think it exists anymore. But when, just by that, when... we accidentally doxed Micro, whose middle name is Bosch. <laughs> oh no oh my goodness yeah and my middle name's wayne oh oh god i have already shown my full name my address my phone number well, my that wife, doesn't ex- my information that doesn't exist anymore let's blow it out yeah i know but let's face it if you were watching it live you know all of this already <laughs> i already forgotten it who cares yeah who cares who exactly? Who cares? Come talk Oh, us. and Jelly, his fake name is James Trickington. If you know the reference, uh, that's awesome. But I bet I'm the only one here that probably does. I don't, so. Yeah. James Trickington. Oh, yeah, I'm going to let that one sit. I'm not going to explain the shit out of a joke. We're going to continue on with this hilarity. Because this guy actually seems like, even in spite of his mental inacuities, we're not making fun of his mental illness. No, we, but we, let's face it, this is kind of funny. <laughs> well, there's something. Like, I mean, he's doing remarkably well, I guess. Yeah, he seems pretty well adjusted for his. Like it's not like it's not like it's not like he. It's not like he's like he's not like par like. It's not like he's paranoid or anything. He he just has weird idea. It, it feels less like he's psychotic. And more that, like, he just has really weird ideas that's inspired by the fact that he probably thinks slightly differently because of his bipolar. He's the homeless guy. Oh, go ahead. It sounds a little bit story-wise like the story of Terry Davis. Yeah. If you know who that is. I do. Boss. Well, I'm, I'm kind of looking at this as like the homeless guy that was outside of the convenience store that's, that says crazy stuff to him himself all the time. He just happened to get a book published. Yeah, that still sounds like Terry Davis. Okay. Apart from, apart from a book, it was an operating system, but whatever. That's more or less Wait, the same thing. Wait, it was a what? An operating, an operating system. Symbol OS. The guy, the guy created oh, from, yeah. from okay. scratch. Yeah. 
Like, which is like, what he made, considering he was a one-man team, was pretty fucking impressive, actually. I have it on my VM. It's, it's... Because of course I do. Yeah. I have never, uh, I've seen people use it online, but I've never experienced it myself. Yeah, just, just don't bother. Just, it, it, just don't. I'm not going to. <laughs> it was very specifically made uh, for his purposes. Like, you can't really use it for anything. <laughs> it's kind of, uh, it's kind of like using uh, DOS 6.1 today. There's no DOS 6.1. Okay, whatever the fuck it was. MS, the, the DOS, whatever, Microsoft 3 or 1.0 or whatever the fuck it was. The, the last Papa DOS version was 6.22. And it jumped directly from 6.2 to 6.1 6 to, uh, sorry, 6.0 to 6.2 and then to 6.21 and then 2.2. Oh, okay, yeah, I didn't know all the releases. I just assumed well, at there was at a least, At least it's like, some, somewhat proper counting, unlike, like... There's no Windows 9. There's never going to be a Windows 9. I... W it's, it's because 7, 8, 9. Ha! I, I, I don't know. Maybe I'm alone in this thinking, but I actually kind of like Windows 10. I think it's like all of the, the shit that worked from 8 and all of the... No, I, like, I, don't, nice I don't have a problem with the operating system itself. I have a problem with the name. Yeah, it is kind of stupid. Oh. Hello, Discord. Why are you giving me an, a, a JavaScript error in the main <laughs> process? Oh, that's a new one. No, sometimes you get uh... it on Discord. I have no idea why. All right, all right. So let's let's continue oh. on with oh. Mr. Uh, Mr. Levi. If you can hear, if you can hear that, game. that's if you can hear that audience. That is all the um, error errors popping up, and now they went away. I have no idea what it just did. Everything just seems to I be working. Think. Oh. Okay, uh, Gio, it's your turn. Yeah, um, <laughs> little did doctors realize, however, that he was taking part in the mystical, what? That he was taking part in the mystical awakening, shamanic initiation process. Shamanic. Which it, whatever. <laughs> Doesn't yeah. matter. Sh shamanic initiation process which at the times mimicked psychosis but in actuality was a spiritual experience of a far of a far different order completely off the map of the psychiatric system uh, okay yeah, the doctor, said, the he was doctor able said, to said himself from the medical and psychiatric establishment so that he could continue his process of self-discovery thankfully as paul freed himself from the shackles sh shackles shackles, shackles. of psychiatry he found a spiritual teachers who ins instead of seeing paul as crazy recognized that he was beginning to spiritually awaken okay i have been okay so there's a show on cbs yeah. i usually don't watch shows on on regular tv but netflix just got the first i guess season or so of this show called evil right mm -hmm. and it's about this like dude that's trying to become a priest and Asif Manvi is in it. That's the only reason why I fucking watched it. Because I love that dude. He is hilarious. Um, and him and Wyatt Cenac, I wish those dudes would get together and do something. Because they, they were the funniest. Anyway. Anyway. But the, in the show, there was a scene where they were, like, trying to figure out. They, they essentially go to, like, different paranormal happenings and try to decide if it's real or not for the Catholic Church. It's a pretty interesting concept. But there's oh, an episode where so like a guy that's like a Catholic. Catholic X Files. Yeah, seriously, that's exactly what the fuck it is. Like, oh. that's how I described it to the person that was describing it to me. I was like, oh, so it's like the X, X Files, but for the Catholic Church. But anyway, so um, there's an episode where they're trying to decide whether or not a fucking uh, possession is real, and the guy, uh, the, the guy that's trying to become a priest, was like, possessions look like uh, mental disorder, and mental disorders look like possessions. We're just here trying to figure out which one's which, and I was like oh shit, it's very heavily leaning towards one of those directions and it's definitely mental disorder mimicking position, possession. Possession level at 100%. <laughs> but that's exactly what it sounds like here. He's trying to call nice, his nice mental... One, he's, trying to, he's trying to call his, his mental... What would you call it? Like, 
I mean, it's not mental illness. He's he's presumably assuming his diagnosis is correct, which we have no idea. Um, let's just go with that. The doctor's got it right. He's bipolar. Yeah, and but but he's calling it his uh, breakthrough, his yeah. shamanic breakthrough, and I think that that's very, a very, like a very weird way of putting it. Like just just embrace it for what it is and take your medicine. God damn it. Uh, an artist, after the trauma of his shamanic breakdown slash breakthrough, why does he keep calling it a breakdown? Well, he probably like, had a like breakdown. He probably had a breakdown and then through that breakdown realized some things or got some yeah, ideas. He keeps calling it a shamanic breakdown. Were you a shaman already and then you that, had a no, breakdown? No, a shamanic, a shamanic breakdown is um, if you're doing like tribal music, it's a specific breakdown in the, in the music. <laughs> It's where it's where the rhythm is cut in half and then everything goes syncopated with some weird time signature yeah, for four see. or five seconds. Gotcha. Anyway, he became a certified art teacher. Oh, well, good, good fucking job. Good for you. Uh, due to his interest in the work of... Oh, Jesus Christ. See, I knew we were eventually going to come to this and I'm still super curious. Never mind. Anyway, we'll he was interested out. in the works of Carl Jung. Uh, by the end of the decade, he became the manager of the C.G. Young Foundation book service in New York. So not even a real foundation, it's, just a book service. It's weird that he keeps calling him C.G. Young. Like anyone else would know him as Carl Young. Yeah. See, I wonder if this. I wonder if C.G. Young is somebody else. I've ever heard the name Carl Young before. What was Carl Young? He was. He was. He's like the godfather of like analytical. He, he psychology. was. He was one of. He was Sigmund Freud's student, basically. Yeah. Not but, basically, but he was I, what was he was, but like, and then I think they ended up disagreeing so much that they stopped talking. Right. Um, but by the way, um, it's pronounced Jung. Okay, yeah, it is pronounced yeah, Jung. Jung. You're right. You're right. I'm gonna give you that one and not even be a dickhead about Jung. it. Jung. Uh, but yeah, so Jung. I wonder. It's pronounced Jung. <laughs> it's, it's pronounced Jungi. Even though there's Jung. no. Jung. Jung. All right, so let me open this up yeah. real quick. I want to know if there's a CG Young that's maybe not Carl Young. No, it's still that, comes up. That, that is Carl that is no Young. that. That is it's just weird that he uses um Well, I was just wondering okay, so for instance, like you know how Well, uh, considering that the next sentence is literally young younger in journal Quadrant. I love that that's that that's its name. It's a cool. It's a cool name for a for a journal, a magazine. To be fair, yeah, quadrant is a also, good word. Yeah, it really is. But and it, it actually kind of, um, you know, if it's like a periodical that comes out like every three or four months, that's like a quadrant of the year. Like that would be super mm. clever on top of clever, right? Mm. Sure. Anyway, so in 1993, after many years of struggling to contain and integrate his non-ordinary experiences, Paul started to openly share his insights about the dreamlike nature of reality. He began giving talks and facilitating groups based on how life, uh, how life is a shared waking dream. That's oh, that scratchy heady uh, that we are all co-creating and co-dreaming together. Wow, this is going to take a lot of fucking. <laughs> Even if that was correct, what difference would it make? Seriously, he is well, the founder of... It would make the difference that if if we are co-creating <laughs> and co-dreaming together, we might be able to collectively influence reality. Oh, man, you know what's kind of fucking weird? One of my favorite bands, a band called All Shall Perish, in like 2009 or 2010, they released an album called Awaken, Awaken the Dreamer. And I'm starting to feel like... Like having remembered some of the lyrics to the album and how it was sort of new agey and like weirdy, like oh, they were all no. of a sudden obsessed with aliens and shit. Like now I'm starting to think like, oh my God, was this like a, a nod to this moron? Because a lot of these Maybe it's a Dune reference. Are... Man, I really fucking hope so. But I mean, <laughs> seriously, with all the pseudosciencey stuff that was littered into the lyrics, it's kind of like... Have you... Okay, so I'm sorry... Have you read Dune or seen it? Yeah. Okay. I mean, that's also a good point. Yeah. <laughs> Shit. 
fuck i gotta think about this later let's just move on um i'm sorry i didn't mean it's to okay he is the founder of the awakening the dream community in portland oregon it just makes it kind of makes sense that he did it in oregon does anybody else no no me? that makes complete sense it's, it was either gonna be oregon california or sedona arizona or or washington because the state of washington is actually pretty liberal yeah, but it doesn't really have the. It doesn't really have the like like. As far as I know, Washington has, doesn't have the like like woo new age hippie bullshit going on. Look, all you guys need to know about Portland. I've just sent you as a link. Oh yeah, that one's cool. The the unicycling Darth Vader that has a flame. Uh, flame <laughs> <laughs> we're just, like the years old but it's so great oh my god a pioneer in the field of spiritual emergence he's a pioneer guys a fucking pioneer paul is a is a wounded healer in private practice helping Wait, others what? who i think he means that like it like like he's he's wounded too, but he's helping uh, helping other people who are wounded to heal. Helping others who are also awakening to the dreamlike nature of reality. His work has gone through three phases because of his intent. Wait, that's not how you list things. You can't say three phrases and then go because of his intense interest in dreams, both night dreams and the dreamlike nature of reality. He was first known as the dream guy after writing the spelling vertical vertical i have no idea how to pronounce that it sounds native vaguely native american um uh, uh, i would say with tico yeah uh he became associated with the idea of of with okay after publication of the quantum revelation and he forgot to a telesized T. Um, he is now seen as connected with quantum physics. <laughs> um, we're not told by whom, but I'm sure. Uh, all three aspects, dreams, with Tico, and quantum physics are interconnected and complementary facets, facets of a deeper reality into which he continuously deep, he's continuously deepening in this investigation. Wow. That uh, all just kind of hurt my head a little bit. And he's a, apparently all of these things. You want to list his, uh, his accomplishments, uh, Gio? Yeah, sure. <clears throat> he's the author of The Madness of George Bush, a, re a reflection of our collective psychosis. I mean, that uh, one actually it's sounds interesting. I want to read that. That's so, like, I don't even care if it's New Age bullshit. I want to read what... And new age bullshit, a new age bullshit analysis of George Bush. And I don't even care which one of them it is. George Bush did quantum 9-11. <laughs> he did quantum 9-11. This spelling vertical, breaking the curse of evil. That sounds, that sounds like a B-horror movie. Yeah. Awakened by darkness when evil becomes your father. That also sounds like a... Um, horror movie. That that sounds like uh, that that one scene in uh, the Emperor um, Empire Strikes Back. Oh no. yeah, it does. No, I am your father. <laughs> <laughs> and the quantum revelation, a radical synthesis of science and spirituality. Oh, a Tibetan Buddhist practitioner for over 30 years, he has intimately studied with some of the greatest spiritual masters of Tibet in Burma. He was the coordinator of the Portland chapter of the Padma Sambhava Pat Pat Buddhist center for over 20 years. It's, it's, it's because in, like, I'm going to guess it's because there's a, uh, in whatever language that's from, there's a, um, there's a differentiation between aspirated and non-aspirated uh, bees. I would guess that it's Padma Sambhava. Oh, whatever. So, 
she has done a lot of he's written a lot of crazy and like he's uber spiritual cool we already don't knew that he's what spiritual? oh my god oh please tell me that i'm not thinking of the fucking wrong person oh what he looks like yeah he kind of looks like peter molyneux uh a little bit yeah he kind of looks like he's... molyneux with hair he kind of looks like Peter Molyneux if Peter Molyneux and um, Jordan B. Uh, B. Peterson had a baby. No, no. Yeah. He, he looks like as if what uh, Obama would look like if he was an albino. Oh shit! Oh, he yeah. kind of does he, have. He's, a, he's an all white um, Obama. That's that's actually good. That's a good description. That's, people in the South would tell you that's the good Obama. <laughs> yeah, with a. The one that's completely different to Obama, um, Karab uh, Amabo. Karab Amabo. Because he's, he's white and Republican. Karab Amabo! The first part is that sounds like an actual, like, fantasy name. So. Can we just call him Albino Obama? <laughs> Albino Obama? Al Albino Obama. Okay. Wait, wait, wait. Albino so, Obama was fine. Uh, that's pretty So funny. he has an index of articles and does a article gallery oh so the article gallery is like like in chronological order i think and the other one is like topics or no i just love no i love that blurb in the top left hand corner i'm never gonna get enough of that i love paul levi's work sting <laughs> which fucking sting is it i'm no, still no 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 you know what it is it's not even a it's not a person it's like a, you know, like a music sting or musical sting or something. Like, it, it's just that, it, that is, he's just describing what it is. That is the or sting. Maybe, or maybe he heard somebody say that real sarcastically and he's just letting you know that it hurt its fe his feelings. So, sting. <laughs> <laughs> maybe he knows a piece. I love Paul Levy's work. And he was like, ooh, that stings. Uh... Article gallery seems to have a little like more to look at. So let's I just, go with them. I just expect article gallery to just be like a bunch, just all of his articles and frames. I'm, I was proud of this article. I'm proud of this article. <sighs> oh fuck me! All right, so it's no time to be normal. Developing Young's imagination for evil. Uh, I had a dream of what COVID nineteen. We should look at his quantum, dream. Quantum, quantum medicine. medicine for coronavirus. We're back to our roots, everyone. <laughs> we are all being oh, cooked in the yeah. switch together. No, we're about to download a secure off the internet, boys. Yeah. We're about to crack open a cold a cold cure for the coronavirus with uh, with, with my boys on the weekend. The coronavirus contains its own medicine. No. Oh no. my God. No. The... No. Dude. No. <laughs> Just no. No. War madness in our minds. Shamans to the rescue. What are they rescuing? Oh, scapegoat. Oh, that's not what I thought it was. Never mind. The shadow is the doorway to the light. The revelations of quantum physics are the treasure for humanity. These all sound sound like they were made by the Deepak Chopra, um, <laughs> which, uh, like, yeah. <laughs> quantum, quantum, quantum rainbows is an album title. No, quantum rainbows are is where uh, the LGBTQ and the science community meet up. Oh, oh yeah, oh that that's good. That's a it's a it's a um, right. it's a student it's just like a student organization for uh, LGBT um, uh, physics students. It's an it's a niche club, but they tip really well. <laughs> wah, wah. What I'm trying to say is, tip your fucking waiters. Oh my god, I love I, I love how a lot of these images. Uh, you know, to do with what the article is supposedly about. Like, are we possessed? And then it's just a foosball tape. How are they, how are they, how are those two things connected? I'm, I'm very curious. The Breaking biospheric dream, buddy. 
Oh, Jesus Christ. Hey, you know what's funny? It's all oh. in the psych or psyche. Uh, it's the, the, the image being used, that moon progression was literally what was used for, I think, the Converge album, All We Love, We Leave Behind. Oh. Yeah, so when I saw that, I didn't think of Woo Science. I was thinking of a pretty awesome band. We should found a band. We, we, we should... What what kind of style of music would we play? Well, I considering know. that I can't play an a, a, a instrument or hold a tune to save my life, I'm not sure exactly what I would be doing. The hype man, maybe. Do you want to feel? Do you want to feel like your lack of musicianship is is truly uh, something you should be ashamed of? You need to go look up. Okay, the song you heard coming out of my phone earlier was from mm -hmm. a band called Clown. Uh, mm -hmm. For anybody that's a fan of like acid jazz or like uh, power pop music, you might know a band called Knower that has a dude named Lewis Cole in it. You should, we uh, should, the band uh, Noise Core, maybe, yeah, it's essentially Noise Core. You should maybe found a band using only triangles as instruments. <laughs> well, this band is a drummer and a saxophone player that play. They're they're they're. Um, well, that works. You have a melodic and you have a rhythmic instrument. Like, you, like, you have the two instruments you need to make music. <laughs> yeah, but when you listen to clown core, it's like discordant, just nonsense. And then out yeah, yeah. of nowhere, it's like it's like a bunch of nothing. And them screaming no, no words. It's just, it's guttural noises. It's onomatopoeias. They pretend like there are words, but there aren't. Um, and then out of nowhere, about a minute into the song, when you think you can't take the noise anymore, they hit you with this beautiful saxophone solo that mm. makes it so amazing to sit through. Yeah, there's also Nerd Core. There's also Nintendo Core. There's a band called Horse the Band that uh, claims to be Nintendo Core. Their first album was literally all about Nintendo characters. There was a song called Birdo that made them popular. Oh, I think I know that one. Yeah, oh. uh, I've, I've actually Apparently seen Apparently the, the side crashed. That, that was weird. Uh, 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 so, yeah. Uh, Clowncore is a pretty great band. I love them. I don't remember what the point of that was. Yeah, well, oh, yeah, I, if you I think the point was that you... Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah, if you want to feel shit about not being able to play an instrument, go watch the video for computers, because you're going to watch... Two, you're going to watch Lewis Cole play two pianos and a drum beat at the same time. Granted, well, he's playing you... pretty droney things, but he's doing three things at once, and that's impressive all on its own. There the, was a video a few weeks ago, I think, that went viral where a girl was playing a piano and a flute at the same time. Hmm. I saw, I saw a, a, a video this morning of a guy playing a saxophone big to, next to like a big, like, big length of like i don't know half a meter diameter pipe like really long so when he like there would be like like a half second delay for the echo so he's like playing with himself oh yeah yeah there's a dude named justin uh i think his name's justin king he's an acoustic guitarist and he plays a two-headed guitar playing you know rhythm and lead by himself hmm. uh it's very interesting Actually, Micro, I'm surprised I've never showed that guy to you because I'm pretty sure you would love it. Yeah, that sounds there's like... No singing, there's no singing, and it's one guy and a, a two-neck guitar. It's pretty fucking great. Yeah. Notes from the Portland on the world. Oh, my God. Well, we, we, okay, we have... Okay, there's a lot of bullshit here, and we can't read it all. all and probably shouldn't. We have to pick something. Okay. okay, okay, let's just, okay. Hmm. My vote is going to be for something either coronavirus related or something just, just patently absurd. Then we should go for the wine heaven. Oh, it is not, it's, it's, not, it's not, yeah, yeah, I know. I was trying to like figure out how many of the words so I could like to pick a random number. But not all of the lines, have, all of the um, rows have um, six in them. The war in heaven. And the picture of Satan? And I'm assuming one of them is like 
Satan and the other is like the Archangel something. Maybe you got that upside down. <laughs> maybe maybe originally that sword wasn't a sword and it was two double-sided dildos and turns out the devil was really giving the angel okay. ratio. Okay, it wasn't I'm, a war I'm confused here. <laughs> Why are they wearing what are those hats? What is this thing? Oh, that's a tumor? <laughs> Do demons have tumors on their like, like, I don't know. Is it part of his... Like, it doesn't make sense for it to be part of I the... Yeah, I think it's part of the wing. It makes no sense. I'm not sure where the fuck... Oh, it really does. And why is the head of that sword so broad? That's not... You're not stabbing anything with that. That's like... That's like... like that's a fucking... That's a fucking fantasy show, sword. That's like that's... I could see, I could see using that if you're fighting like a giant like walking a... a giant walking vagina army. I mean, but I can't really. No, see that you know what? It's sort of like it's a mixture between an axe and a sword, effectively. So that's... it's a sex. Yeah, it's a sex. That is it's a... clever. It's an odd. <laughs> Probably Lucifer and God. It's like <laughs> the best thing. Well, someone, someone read. We Jelly need to Rich. learn to want the war, war in heaven. And I, someone read while I get another beer. All right, you want to read, Gio, or do you want? I'll read. No, just read. like a trans. Oh wait, what? Just read. Okay, just like a transpersonal force can literally take over and possess a person and make them its instrument of incarnation into the world. This same process can happen on a collective scale as well. A group of people, nations, or an entire species can become seized by a more powerful archetypal energy that compels them to mindlessly and destructively act out their unconscious into the world. In collective events such as wars, civil or un... <laughs> Thanks for making that distinction, I guess. <laughs> like, like wars are civil. No, no, in a, a civil war, as opposed to I like. I think he meant within your within your country or with you know. Yeah, yeah, uh, that's what he means. But that's such a stupid fucking way of putting it. It's it's also it's also like we wouldn't we wouldn't be like if he hadn't written it we wouldn't have been been like oh he probably only means one of them. <laughs> right. He could have just been civil or otherwise, you know, like, and we would have been like, okay, we get it. Um, we are seeing through a looking glass darkly. He had, he fucking had to put that Philip K. Dick reference in there, didn't that, he? That, that's not a he Philip just, K. Dick. That's a, that's a... You know, Philip K. Dick wrote a scanner darkly. Oh, I thought you meant uh, the Alice in uh, Wonderland um, reference. No, through the looking glass. No, 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 no. Okay, through the looking glass is a different reference, but slipping in the word darkly. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, into the world, soul of humanity. The world is soul. Laid out. Huh? It's well, the world into the world. It... No, it's, yeah, it's world. an apostrophe. Sorry, no, there's a hyphen. It's a, it's a, a the world soul. Oh yeah, I, re I see. Here's how my mind saw it. I saw the hyphen at the beginning where, where we is, yeah, and it's, I just it's... assumed that the end of it was at world. I forgot civil or uncivil was what it was actually being. Uh, Singled out there, which he could have separated it by fucking commas, not hyphens. Anyway, that's how you well, inject those, those, aren't hyph thought. those aren't hyphens, those are uh, longer, too, too long to be hyphens. Anyways, that's weird. Anyway, yeah, uh, the world soul of humanity and is being played out on a global state. Oh, shit, I should have read this as Alex Jones. Uh, just like a process going on within the unconscious of an individual will compel them to act their inner conflict in their life and an activity of war, a process that is going on. Oh my God. This is such a fucking cluttered uh, sentence. Uh, within the collective psyche of humanity, which is to say within each of us is getting dreamed up 
en masse into materialization in the world. Okay, whoa, whoa, whoa. Let's stop real quick because that sentence starts with the word just and ends with world. And that itself is almost a fucking paragraph. And which he says, yep. unconscious, psyche. I mean, Ansel is right. Ansel in the in the chat is right. Dashes isn't legitimate way of separating. Um. Oh no no no! Yeah, he's right, but it just seems really cluttered to to put so many oh, hyphenated. Yeah, no, it's also been he write he writes the same as the same way I do, where like it becomes extremely long run on sentences. Oh yeah, I have the same yeah. problem. Yeah. I'm not saying that adding them in with hyphens is incorrect. I'm just saying it doing it so much just seems like he ran out of devices to use. And instead of making asides, why can't you make the sentence that it's built around more clear? Instead of going on into these flowery demonstrations that you have a vocabulary deeper than a shallow puddle. Uh, you could simply just reduce what you're saying, simplify it, and put it in normal, plain, everyday words. You don't have to use the word collective. Um, what What is it even trying to say? Like, did any of you yeah, actually no, understand what the, fuck, what the fuck that paragraph meant? I started reading it in a goofy voice, expecting him to get more and more crazy, but I just got bored because it was just a bunch of word salad. It was fluff. It was fluff the sentence. Come into a boring theater near you. Come into your local fucking, what are those things called? They're like nap pubs where you can go and like take a fucking nap on your lunch break or some shit in Japan. Oh, yeah, yeah. I almost want to move to Japan just for that specific job. Well, the problem to be able to utilize that, that, uh, uh, you know, offering those mm. those services because we have nothing like that in America. <laughs> I would love to take a nap on my lunch break. Well, you do realize why they're able to take a nap on their lunch break, right? <laughs> it's because their days are much much longer than ours. Yes, you work yourself yeah, no, half to it. death. <laughs> Sometimes completely to death, dude. I I would like to say that I admire the Japanese work ethic, but it's one that was no. forced upon them, so I feel bad about it. It's not worth it. Work ethic, ethic. Uh, like it's it's just like the dedicated, the dedicated because like that's what's expected of them. They end up like yeah, the suicide to. rates are like really high and stuff. Like you yeah, don't. But, but remember that that suicide is honorable. Yeah, I don't know. It's hard to think that one of my unless unless films unless came, unless, came unless you're found by um by um by Paul one of the Paul brothers in a the forest then it's uh then... I just find it unendingly amusing that one of my favorite forms of entertainment yes I love anime I love specific animes but I love them no less came from a country that seems so adverse to having fun like Japan on a whole, when when you don't take any of the nuance or subtlety into account, it seems like a country that just seems like hell. You work all the time. Maybe your family judges you constantly. You have to work phrases into your sentence that show your humility. It's like, oh, all that sucks. Then well, that maybe you well, should the, try the, a German, well, the language thing, German cartoons. I mean, the language thing isn't like like that's you don't like like they don't actually think about that. That just becomes second nature. That's just how Japanese works. Oh, I know, I know, but I'm just saying, as an American, like I said, not taking in any nuance or any of the subtleties, That's looking at true. it from the outside in with a base judgment, that seems like hell. But once you understand that Japan is a very, you know, Japanese is a very nuanced language, and it's just something that's like putting apostrophe, like, you know, contractions. Also, like yeah. Other countries look at that kind of weird, and we're like, yeah, we can just force two words together. Also, with, yeah, um, the... the, the the chat is correct. Like, yeah, you sound a lot like I know you're like saying it all the, without all the nuances, but yeah, you you sound like someone who has never been to Japan. I think, I think no, no, that's exactly know. what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. From from that out, and they're not they're not saying anything against my my point. My point is from yeah. an outside from an outsider's perspective, looking in with no nuance taking into account at all. Japan seems like it kind of sucks. 
But then I know personally that some of my favorite video games have been made there. Uh, the country is pretty badass and has a thriving tourist population. Uh, some of my favorite musicians are Japanese. And while I've never been there, I can understand some of the culture through, you know, vicariously. You listen to enough Japanese bands that sing in English, you learn a lot about mm. their culture having not ever been there, you know? Because bands like The Pillows, The Pillows have an album that is in English, and it's mm. pretty fucking great. And they're the people that did the opening to uh, FLCL, if mm. anybody is curious. Hey, hey guys, do you want to learn about the Bible? Can, Gio, I would love to learn Gio, about the Bible. Gio, can you tell us about the Bible? Oh, Gio, please. Please tell us about the Bible. I don't want to know about the Bible. I've been dying to hear you talk about the Bible. Okay, well. <laughs> so should I read this or should I uh, talk about my own comments about the Bible? <laughs> no, 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 no you have read to read this. Uh, read this. We need to hear you talk about a biased uh, perspective yeah. of the Bible. Go ahead. Well, the only, because the only Bible I have uh, was given to my great aunt, I think, as a wedding present in 1943. I have half Some a Bible. Kind of Does that count? What? I have half a Bible. Does that count? But the New Testament. It's only the New yeah. Testament. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Is, is it more than 50%? I don't know. Like... I think the Old Testament is actually bigger, but whatever. Yeah, well, I, I think the Old Testament is like 75% at least. It's a, a, a not a insignificant portion of the Bible, that's for yeah. damn sure. Okay, uh, well, whatever. The Bible itself can be seen to a self-revelation of the human soul. From this point of view, the events portrayed in the Bible can be looked at as symbolically encrypted utterances of the soul. Well, so sure. at least they're not uh, literalists, I would say. As if this is any better. <laughs> Through pointing to transcendental realities, these seemingly mythic realities have everything to do with how we live our everyday lives. Interestingly, the book of Revelations talks about a war in heaven. The spiritual war in heaven is symbolically representing a living dy dynamism, dy dynamism? <laughs> that is occurring within the collective unconscious unconscious of humanity <laughs> which is to say that it's taking place within each one of us in our unique ways sure <laughs> whatever the, and the fuck ones that, that means and so, and the ones that uh, tasted the bite of his sword called him the doom slayer <laughs> 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 if indeed as christ counsels us the kingdom of heaven is within us so too is the war in heaven as long as its inner source of this war is not recognized, however, this split in the psyche is then projected outside to of, of ourselves, uh, appearing in the form of a split between the powers of light and the powers of darkness, which we see playing out in the drama of the world. Is he saying, okay, connecting it to the previous paragraph, is he saying that, like, war, outside war, like, war war, comes about because there's like a spiritual war inside us and we're denying so we're projecting it out inside of oh. this is like i'm sure this means something to him i think oh god i think i might be right when we're not able to contain the warring elements within ourselves, however, this internal conflict of, op of opposites spills into the, into the outside world, where it gets collectively dreamed up. Even he's putting that in, in quotations. Uh, uh, in the world theater. Cancel. That is, yeah. Cancel. I, 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 the suburban sass. I saw that. That is beautiful. <laughs> oh my god. So I'm trying to get my hands on a copy of Partners so that I can show oh. a bunch of my friends. Oh Partners. yes, please do. Dude, I, I found a ver I found a I found a copy on the internet and I watched it off that and then I felt really bad afterwards and I was like, I have to buy it because now I feel like a dick. Uh, but I will not reveal where I watched it at because I don't want everybody else no, to that, just buy the that, movie. That's a movie that serves to be in. Well, yeah, sort of. Want... It, they did start shooting 
right, it's like we're shooting uh, blanks randomly in the middle of a neighborhood without any permit. <laughs> no, my favorite part is whenever the fucking neighbors come out and they're just standing oh, in the back oh, of the yeah, scene. Yeah, 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 yeah. Which movie? Partners. Partners. I it's made by the student. That one. Oh, Red Letter Media Again. showed it to me. Again, yeah. we're this, all... is the, this is the first and I are always going to talk about Red Letter Media. This is Let's the third episode in a row. Yeah, we. I, I absolutely, that's what, no doubt, that is probably my favorite channel on YouTube. I could rewatch their videos over and over and over and over and over. And over. I have. Because Rich Evans, that man, Dick the Birthday Boy. Yeah. He just. Yeah. He's always there for a good laugh. I love it. Uh, I don't know where it, I, oh, it's collectively dreamed up. Even he can't keep. Um, like even he he's not using like putting that in quotation. In the world theater, by way of projection and subsequently acting out. Sorry, subsequently acted out. Dennis, Denise, Dennis. I'm not sure if mom says the. I have okay. Dennis. I would just say Dennis. Dennis. Okay, I'm. I would say Dennis. Okay, um, ch chat and anyone in here. I'm gonna horribly mispronounce this because I have no idea what the fuck. I'm gonna say uh, oh, wait. Rouge Mount. <laughs> no, uh, Rouge Mont. Yeah, I would say Rouge Mont. Okay, sure. I can't say that. I'm not the Denis. Denis de Rouge Mont. Yeah, it's probably French. Offer of the Devil's Share. Oh wait, he can't. Be, he can't be French then because that's an English title. Um, right, <laughs> we are all in the sinking ship, and at the same time, we all are in the ship that has just launched a torpedo. Sounds like a very incompetent torpedo crew. There's... Right? <laughs> Sir, it would appear we have targeted ourselves. Sorry, Captain, we accidentally put it into the tube backwards. <laughs> Captain, I got out and was looking into the tube, and it appears we have shot ourselves. There's only one humanity, <laughs> and that is the sh that is this humanity, which is launching launching torpedoes and bombing ourselves bombs against itself. Okay, I kind of like, like, despite our jokes, I kind of like that. That's a good image. It is, but whenever you think of like, but 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 you know what image is conjured up in my mind the whole time you were talk, you were saying that quote. I was thinking of those times when um, Elmer Fudd is trying to kill Bugs Bunny, and Bugs somehow gets him to look down the barrel of his oh. gun, and then he shoots himself <laughs> in the face. That's the only thing that my brain could keep thinking of the whole goddamn That's time. Yeah, but that, this, but that doesn't work when the gun is made out of rubber. Wait, wait, what? Sure, you can make a gun out of rubber. It just, like, you just have to, uh, um, like, you just have to, like, not shoot, that, like, put a lot of gunpowder in there. Like, you can't shoot, like, with, like, a whole lot of power, but you can totally make a gun out of rubber. I have something for you. Check the Discord side chat. Imagine if the song Rubber oh, Ring by the Smiths yeah. had been called Rubber Gun. Rubber gun, rubber gun does sound like a, like it, it's, it does sound like an album or a song title. Yeah, it does. It, it sounds like actually knowing the Smith's stance against uh, murder and war and stuff, it would, it, it wouldn't be beyond the realm of possibility that they would make a song called rubber gun. Yeah. I would like to think that Morrissey's a little more like clever than that but really he's just an asshole that wrote some pretty good songs that's a lot of musicians yeah that's true trent reznor is a dick i met that guy i saw nine inch nails and i met trent reznor you know who actually surprisingly is really nice even though i hate the band who david draymond the lead singer of disturbed Huh. And all the guys from Slipknot and all the dudes from Dragon okay, Force. No, Although no, okay. Dragon Force was really true. Okay, drunk. Dragon Force and Slipknot, I knew. Like, that, that, and I kind of half expected that, uh, them to be nice guys. Especially Dragon Force. Oh, yeah, Dragon Her Force seems like they're just like, oh yeah, we just want to, like, we just want to oh, have yeah, fun and, we, and, like, make, make the music we want to hear. And, like, we don't care. Oh, hell yeah. Yeah. Dragon Force is the modern day cacophony. If you don't know who cacophony is, you need to go listen to him. Just don't mind the lead singer, Peter Murray, because he fucking sucks. Ugh. 
But it's Jason Becker and Marty Friedman. If you're a fan of Megadeth, you might know who Marty Friedman is. Please I can do. talk about music please. all day, bro. Yeah. Please do, Heat Shield. Please, uh, please do buy more uh, Flex Seal and try that. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, make the rubber gun. Come on. Also, I'm I not, I am not liable for any damages you might occur. Um, yeah, I, I don't want to see you go down for some for somebody else killing themselves with a rubber gun. Inwardly split. Ooh, we unconsciously no, hold on. act out our. Hold on, fuck, fuck this guy. Woden Toad has uh, just came back from basket weaving. That sounds way more interesting. Yeah, that actually does sound. That sounds fun. Interesting. Go go back to it. This is this is insanity. <laughs> okay, now you can read. Inwardly split. We unconsciously act out our inner uh, sense of fragmentation. I'm okay. Did, did anybody get anything from that sentence? He's based. He's basically saying that wars and stuff and bad things happen in real in real life because we all have a spiritual split and war that we won't acknowledge and we project it out outwards. Okay, so back to the wet basket weaving real quick. Uh, Heat Shield asked was if it was co-ed naked underwater basket weaving and. <laughs> And I love Woden's answer. It was water adjacent, which means that which doesn't rule out the na the naked part or Cohen. Yeah, I, I love that. I love that the naked was completely avoided. And now that you, now that that's been pointed out, you two can discuss that in the chat. Um, anyway, so as we see in the world today, by attacking and trying to destroy other parts of ourselves reflected in the outside world which is total and utter insanity guys it's totally crazy. okay that is the first logic that is the first rational thing he said oh man but he's about to he's about to invoke the words of Ooh. okay anyway in the words of dr martin luther king our society like, like, has like, truly okay i find it weird that he didn't include the fact that he was a reverence yeah the reverend in there i think the that seems like 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 that seems like something this this site wouldn't like, considering that he's like, in he's also invoking like my, m mystical Christianity and stuff and a lot of religious things. Seems that like is something a good point. Would, eh, I don't know. Huh, that's actually a good point. But I love how where he chose to um, use the man's word was a you know. A common phrase, something that could be easily attributed to literally anybody that's ever protested war in any way. Yeah, <laughs> because it's, our our society has truly gone mad on war. Like, what the fuck? You couldn't find Dr. Martin Luther King had more than just the "I have a dream" speech. There are tons of recorded speeches of the man, and he was a very eloquent speaker. And I'm sure that somewhere in his, I'm going to say this, but I mean it in the utmost respect, animated way of putting forth a message you could find something that he said that was 10 times more clever and a lot more effective verbally yeah you know like he was a very passionate speaker so i'm sure that there was something in there that could have been you know could have brought out it could have stirred some emotion in this instead of just making me think literally anybody could have said that yeah I, i'm sure i'm sure uh i'm sure he uh, said it napoleon like... said it <laughs> Probably not that. Probably not. Probably but, in but, French. But, but his sentence was, "I've gone mad on war." Mm -hmm. See, because it, he didn't include the rest of the the quote from Martin Luther King. We have no idea what the beginning or end of that quote actually was. But anyway, our government's reliance on military solutions, um, what has been called its war psychosis, is pathological. I have, I have never. I have never. Who who calls it that? I've never. <laughs> I have heard no it. idea. <laughs> Like, but I apparently, mean, military I, solutions are mental illness. Um, that depends entirely on what is the solution to. Yeah, like if you were attacked, I feel like a military solution would be a, a, a pretty decent answer. I mean, I, mean, I wouldn't. Don't... I wouldn't call like fighting against the like the, the, <laughs> the Nazi Germany in the Second World War. I wouldn't call that a mental illness. Like I was, yeah, I was gonna say like, like sometimes. Of course, was, of course, that was the example you would bring up, right? 
Well, it's the well, most, I mean, think it's about the it. most like, obviously, one isolated event. It's the most up like it is the like it is the most famous famous and most like it is the war where the sides are like one side like what the one side is like clearly more like we're clearly on the wrong uh, wrong and like one is clearly on the right side like like obviously there's way more nuances but like of all the wars that humans have ever fought i feel like that one is probably up there like as one of the okay yeah clearly these guys are the idiots yeah it was was yes, poland uh, more or less mentally ill for being invaded you yes, know yes uh micro i uh, obviously agree that definitely <laughs> Yes, I, I like definitely how, I like how you That switched. is the same opinion that I have. I like how when you switched to that voice, he almost sounded like Dan. <laughs> oh God, he All just right. already started build, <laughs> started sketches and pressure calculations. <laughs> From the ruling elite's point of view, there are there are they are just trying to accomplish hegemonic geopolitic geopolitical objectives and are willing to sacrifice as many innocent people as necessary in order to accomplish their morally depraved goal. Okay, I don't understand what the warring, why would that be necessary to war with other countries to get your geopolitical ideology out into the world? I think what he's saying is that, or what he's trying to say is that the, Going to war for some people at least seems to be the default yeah. plan A. Oh, so okay, yeah, I don't think. So. I mean, you would hope not. Well, but anyway, I mean, that moral is, deficiency. It's also it's probably also a comment on like recent like the last like two decades of probably even more of um, how the U.S. has done in particular has done foreign policies. Like he's not. When was this article written? Uh, this is the newest thing, so presumably quite recently. Recently, yeah. I don't know if okay, there was a... Fair enough. Doesn't seem Because let's be... be honest, the US has gone a little bit bonkers on that regard. Oh, too. wait, I think you passed up the uh, the date it was written. I think it's at the go up. Okay, we can see when that comment was posted. A, a week, week ago, ago, but that doesn't mean it's... Uh... It was written a week ago. Oh, there's a comment section. Like a Great. Yeah. Oh, should we leave a comment? Nah, we we shouldn't. Ah, oh, that's a bummer. We need to find another website we can interact with. Because <laughs> that's well, we always call, really a lot of fun. We could call them. Oh yeah, wait, do, does he have a contact number? He does have a contact page. Oh god, see, there's a number. Oh, oh it's, please, it's, there isn't. There. The last one was so funny, though. Well, the last one yeah. also made sense. Like, yeah. It made sense to call because they were selling a product. So interesting, oh my, my friend. Thanks you guys again for your contributing enrichment to our show and nourishment for our mind. What is also interesting from another perspective in Islam, the w word for holy war is jihad. That's not actually what jihad hat means, but okay. Um, yeah. It means it means something like, I think it just means like, I think it just means struggle or something like that. Yeah, it just mean, I think it just means struggle. Yeah, struggle, struggle or effort. effort. Yeah. And there's like, like, like jihad isn't like inherent isn't inherently our like it yeah it's a very uh, word literally meaning striving or struggling especially for a praise worth goal like jihad isn't like inherently like uh hey i'm gonna like kill people from a religion yeah there was a jihad against christopher hitchens but it was to ruin no, no, his that, career no that was well yeah But like, like also just like peacefully, like, um, like, uh, spur spreading the if the faith of Islam is also jihad. I think there's like a big one yeah, and a small one. Yeah, because it's like a uh, yeah it's a mission. Yeah. 
But I love how he's like, and the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him. Wait, are we just like... Yes, this this guy is clearly... I'm going to hazard a guess and say that uh, this guy is probably um, a Muslim. <laughs> Yeah, but I'm just wondering, like, how does the how I'm wondering, like, uh, in this, is there going to be a disagreement or? Uh... No, he's just adding that um, in one of the hadiths uh, and it's written, you know, saying subscribe to him that before one could commit themselves to the lesser holy war, they first needed to complete the greater holy war. When asked what the greater holy war was, he replied that the war was one's ego and nafs. Which is what he's talking about. He's talking about like the inner war, like because he thinks that all the wars in the um, in the world oh, okay. come from yeah. like like Good your point. inner inner spiritual wars. So like that comment actually makes sense. Oh holy shit! Do you think that this? Oh never mind. That's a far stretch. That would be a lot to jump. Never mind. I was gonna say something dumb that sounded funny, but really it's just dumb. Hmm. I'm dumb. It's dumb. I'm dumb. Hmm. Yes, I know we didn't read it, but like we got the gist of what he meant. Like, and we knew, like it was pretty clear where he was going. He's just <laughs> he uses so many fucking words. The mind parasites of Kelly Wilson. What? Wait, what? what? Okay, I'm, oh, I'm assuming that it's a book based on the image. Psychic parasites. Mind Wilson was parasites. waking up to the psychic parasites that were within not only himself, but all of humanity. Excuse me? Ugh, yeah. That's a gross picture. Yeah, that is a very disgusting picture. That looks cool. Oh, that's a mind parasite, apparently. But it's in the stomach. They're fucking huge. I want to know what the fuck this. That looks like the head of a like a, an asparagus. I don't know where it came from. It's a Wendigo. Wendigo. Yeah. Oh. So uh, that's like from it's called the piece is literally called Wendigo. No, 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 no. Yeah, but I think it's from like a. Um... Yeah, it's a Native American thing. Yeah. There you go. Uh, no. Definition. Algonquin. Oral traditions. It's a cannibalistic yeah. monster that preys on the weak and socially disconnected. So is it a brain thing or a thing that eats people? Because they just described it as something that eats Yeah, people. like, I don't think a Wendigo in, like, in the Native American tradition, I can't, don't, did you say that was, a, what tribe did you say? Uh, Algonquin. Okay. Um, I don't f have a feeling, like, I don't know, but I don't think there was a mind parasite. I think it like, was a literal, like, it ate people. Yeah, it, it preyed on the socially inept yeah. and weak. So it's not a mind parasite. You just found an... It's like a, it's like a, can it's like a, a real parasite. It, who like, would literally thought, preys on you. Who would have thought that this guy would take things from other cultures and religions and just smash them together? Yeah, who 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 would have ever thought that he would butcher oh. somebody else's culture? Oh, let's let's see. Son of a bitch. Uh, I don't know. I have no idea whose turn it is to read. Uh, I want to say that it's yours because uh, read. Uh, sure. <laughs> I think I'm gonna break this one up. It's a bit long to have. Yeah, I would stop. Uh, uh, this guy's sentences are so fucking there. long. If the world, yeah, if the world word world. It should get our attention that every person or group of people have uh, that have discovered what the Native American people called. Oh, so there is a Native American word. Haha. <laughs> With yeah. Chico. Also, I like that it's, it's just a Native American people. Native American people. It was like there were several tribes that with different cultures. Yeah. And no, no, it's it's Let's all it's all one you. thing with all one language. They all called it the same. It's not. It's yeah. It's, let's not. Oh my god, yeah, this is annoying. This guy is really annoying. I'm, thank you for picking this one. This was a good choice. Well, you Keep suggested going. it, so... Uh, <laughs> uh, unanimously consider it to be the most important topic. I'll be the fucking judge of that. There isn't even any comp competition. 
to understand in our world today. To give our give one example, uh, Carlos can I'm gonna butcher this can cast cast castanadas castanadas Don Juan Don Juan uh, refers to Vitigo food by a different name as the topic of all topics. Oh, sh oh what does he call it? No, come on. Come, what, what does he call it? You can't just, like, fruit by a different name. So, so in other words, he probably said something else, and you, um, you just imposed uh, your word on it? Yeah, you interpolated your own... You interpreted your own meaning from something else. <sighs> Called by many different name, names throughout history, the spirit of its ego renders every... Other issues secondary for its ego is the overarching umbrella that contains, subsumes, informs, and underlies every form of self and other self and other destruction. Wait, what? Every form of self and other destruction that our species is acting out in our world. I I, I don't think that's how you write. I, I know what he means that it's like both the destruction of ourselves and of other things. But I don't think that's how you write that. Oh, it sounds weird. It's you, your turn. If we don't come to terms with what what Petico, which can be conceived of as a virus of the mind, oh, is it's revealing a, it's a bad to us, meme. it's a memetic hazard. It's a it's a virus of the of the mind. It's a memetic hazard. Probably <coughs> nothing else will matter, as there will be no more human species. Where Tico inspires the darkest evil imaginable while at the same time potentially helps us to wake up to our true nature as creative beings. Oh, um, okay. Woden is saying after uh, 30 seconds of Googling uh, that it, it's Cree and basically just means someone with an even sp evil spirit. So it is, it's basically like, hey, it's basically bad person, I guess. Yeah, a person with uh, like evil, evil with evil in their hearts, hmm. because that's where evil's held in your. So remember, my microbot uh, <laughs> evil spirit translates to it in Greek. No. Caco demon. Wah wah. No, I'm serious. Just look it up. Just. I always just... assumed it was caco as in shit. Huh? No, uh, it comes from. Greek meaning evil, oh. just means evil spirit. How does that? How does? The, how do you get from that to a big like round ball with one Who eye? Who the fuck do I know? Um, where was I? How Vitico winds up actually manifesting depends on whether we recognize it as the ongoing revelation that it is. It is showing us something about ourselves, and that is of supreme importance for us to know. Wait, did he just say that it only exists if we believe in it? So it's like Tinkerbell. Oh, sorry. I was thinking about how uh, I just realized that the easiest balloon animal to make is a um, is a um, is is a sea urchin. Yeah, he literally just said how Watiko winds up actually manifesting depends on whether whether we recognize it as the ongoing revelation that it is. So if we don't believe in it, it doesn't exist. I guess so. Yeah. So the Watiko is just fucking Tinkerbell. I, I do believe in evil spirits. I do believe in evil spirits. I do believe in them. I love you, Wichiko. Cla clap for the Wichiko. Clap for the Wichiko. <laughs> Yay, Wichiko lives. <laughs> so basically, it's like the weeping angels. So long as you're looking at them, they don't attack you. But in reverse, as long as you're not thinking about the Wichiko. <gasps> I mean, I mean Dr. 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 Who has a monster that is the reverse. The yeah, silence. The, 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 the Wichiko is the bye-bye man. Don't think it, don't say it. You know, that garbage movie? Yeah. No, I was thinking like like Dr. Who itself has an opposite monster of the Weeping Angels. Like the silence. Oh yeah, is yeah, no, no, no. I was using, I was yeah. using the weeping. I know that's exactly what I was talking about. Yeah. Uh, you know, but instead of instead of having to look at it, uh, in, in this instance, you would have to look away from it, pretend it doesn't exist. Ah, la, 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 Wutiko, I can't hear you. You're not there. You don't exist. 
I think I, don't, right, so, I have no idea whose turn, turn it is. It's mine. Oh. Uh, Geo just read. Oh yeah. Uh, what makes what makes a wisdom tradition? <laughs> Suspiciously placed quotation marks. Why is wisdom italicized and not tradition? Um, worthy of the name is uh, whether or not it it illumines. Doesn't he mean illuminates? Yeah, illumines is. I don't think, I don't. I'm not sure. I don't. It might be a what? I don't know. I've never heard it said like that. If it is, that's for damn sure. Are you gonna? I don't even really care. It doesn't matter. Yeah, um, we know what he means. Uh, the 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 covert operations of the Watiko bug. <laughs> is this Wichico guy riding a coat now? In my writings, I am continually expanding my articulation of what of Watiko as I broaden my learning. Basically, he's saying I'm telling you it as I learned it. So um, so I'm gonna hazard a guess and say, Ed, this this guy hasn't like talked to a whole lot of tree people. No, he Love hasn't. This. Loden Toad just got it exactly right. He's being pretentious and getting it wrong. Yeah. He, he, yeah. He, he's just like, oh, I like this word. I, I'm just, don't mind that I, I'm, I'm just here as the white dude stealing your word. Here, come here, word. <laughs> <laughs> come here, word. You work for me now. <laughs> and I'm not going to pay you. Anyway, no. um... That's such fucking bullshit. I mean, that's fucking such a plastic weird shaman. <laughs> <laughs> fucking plastic shaman. That is an actual yes. term. term. <laughs> no, that's exactly yeah. what he is. I'm just glad that you said it because I wasn't thinking about it. Hmm. Um, I never cease to be amazed when I find yet another <laughs> tradition <laughs> in wisdom. Oh my god! Basically, what he's saying, uh, dude, he's bargain shopping for fucking other people's yes, traditions. Yes, he is. He's literally like, he's my joke about, hey, 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 what, come, come here. What's the joke? Yeah, exactly. He's literally it's coming just... to life. Uh, or, or as Jelly put, puts it, hey, what, want to get in my van? <laughs> I, have, I have free candy in the van. Come here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Yes, that's exactly what it is. Um. At, and at Watiko, okay, excuse me, uh, yet another tradition steeped in wisdom, pointing at Watiko in its own unique and creative way. Watiko can be thought of as being a parasite of the mind. No, it's literally a thing that eats humans. No, that's the Wendigo. Oh, wait, what's, wait, did Wichigo, we establish Wichigo what Watiko was the, like, it's, it meant um, uh, someone with a spirit of evil. Oh, uh, it's so it's, again, it's describing an actual person. I don't know. Let, let's let's actually look it up and see what what it says. Uh... <laughs> oh my God, his book is the thing that comes up. Oh Holy no, you're book. right. So, according to, at least according to this, what we're seeing here, it's effectively the same as a Wendigo. Yeah, it refers to an evil person or spirit who terrorizes other creatures. So it could be a spirit too, but even that doesn't even that doesn't make sense. Whenever you, oh my god, go back that wait up. <laughs> the madness of George Bush is another one of his books. Yeah, I want to read one of his books. Oh, that sounds so. That sounds so. That that, that sounds worse than calling a girl a girl the c word. All of the, all of these is like his his fucking shit. I feel like oh the my phrase God. I want to read a Paul Levy oh book should God. be the same thing as So but... Saxo is a Danish um is a Danish like publishing company. But uh -huh. this Obrenli Folk means indigenous people. So that is the category that this is labeled on like organized on. Oh or... my god. Okay, it's it is the same as a Wendigo. Okay, cool. Yeah. Because here, it, so, it, yeah, it, we in were, the tree we language, right. the, how the fuck you say that? Sorry. Uh, oh, yeah. Woden Toad is right. It's just it's just the, the, yeah. the word for it in a different language. So you were right. Huh. Okay, cool. Yeah, well, I was, uh, to be honest with you, I just assumed since the words were so similar. They, yeah. They're kind of similar. Yeah, okay. 
Yeah, I, okay, so cool. My assumption wasn't incorrect. All right, so um, it can't be thought of as a parasite of the mind because it literally seems to be something that's a parasite on other things. Yeah, no, like, the people who believe in it, like, the culture who invented the con- invent like, the, the culture where the concept comes from or the thing comes from views it as, a, like, an actual thing as far as I, I know. Like, it's an actual monster. Oh my God. Okay. So the, the, this is, this is about to get very interesting. So it's thought of as a parasite of the mind that operates through the blind spots of the unconscious in such a way that it hides itself from being seen as it deceives us into thinking and acting in ways contrary to our best interests. Okay. So now it is, you're being possessed. So now it's like Catholic possession. I, I, I guess. Um, in addition to independent, researchers like myself you are not a researcher many artists oh my god can we just can we just fucking like point out the fact that he's just saying that a bunch of artists who sit around and think about shit are now talking about the fact that this is independent research anyway uh imaginatively expressing well, it's the independent it's in, it is independent research he didn't go and talk to anyone else <laughs> Especially not the people he took it from. Hell no. Dude, none of the, like, what the fuck? Like, he's literally just saying that the research that was done was a bunch of people, a bunch of artists, basically giving their interpretation of the Wendigo or Wateko, whatever the fuck, um, uh, in different varieties of mediums. So, like, somebody wrote a song, somebody else wrote a, pe- you know, wrote a poem and then some dude drew a picture some guy sculpted some shit and let's say that a lady did some slam poetry so we're we're, we're assuming that all of this extre- you know sorry for the you know pardon my phrasing uh, extensive research was all that was done <laughs> like, that doesn't make any fucking sense From uh, Woden says, from Google search, that is not far off from the belief system. It is the way bad spirits interact and harm people by using a human action. So okay, so it is sort of like possession, okay, so I guess. Sort of like okay, possession. so it's not like but, okay. Okay, I I always <laughs> assume like maybe that's just uh, that's probably because Hollywood has like misinterpreted it. Um, like that's I don't know a whole lot of native about Native American culture, like. Because I live in Europe. Um, well, to be fair, I don't think a lot of Americans know either. But anyways, like, dude, I have, I have, I'm one eighth Cherokee, and I don't know shit about my culture because it's well, not technically my culture. Yeah, I was about to say, like, it's it probably not even like, cons- like that depends. Like, would they even consider you? Uh, I could actually, I could actually join. I have just enough to be considered part of the like collective people but it oh, would yeah. require like money and effort and it's who cares you know i, I mean, mean i'm I actually not gonna kinda... adopt their way of life mm. I, I respect them for who they are and i'm not gonna you know trample all over there it sort of makes their... yeah it, it sort of makes sense that you would like impose like a like you, that it requires effort so they just like don't get every like any idiots idiot idiots in that happens to be yeah, and you know it's crazy because like I, I'm 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 the people that they wish all these people were like because I I don't find it I didn't grow up around the culture like it was, it you know it was mentioned to me and I saw stuff from my ancestry but to be honest with you I just don't have a lot of ties to it so, um, yeah I'm actually ex- uh, to to remark on what Odin is saying that is tr- or what Odin is saying I that is true and I'm actually. Uh, exactly one eighth Cherokee, hmm. and the only reason why I even care about it or figured it out was because I wanted to go to uh, college for free, and then it turns out that that wasn't like super possible. So it didn't. Uh... Mean... One suggestion: um, if you want to go to college for free, just move to Europe. I get paid. Well, me I too, but I, I think that's a different thing. Yeah, see, I heard that you could go to school in, I think it's either the Netherlands or Denmark or somewhere like that for free if you just pay for your, um, like, lodging and food and shit. Mm. 
Uh, no, they literally pay you. Yeah. They pay you. The 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 government the government ha pays you money to go to school. Oh shit. Yeah. Uh, is there is there an age cut off for that? No. Uh, I wonder what the application process is like because that well, would actually. Well, you kind of. I think. I think you can't like. I don't think you can just move here. Like, well, you could. Like, you would have to have been an exchange student. I don't even sure if you get it like that. I don't know the rules for that. But yeah, no. I like. I that's has been my income. That's what I've been living off of. Like for the last. Well, not for the last, but like for several. For effectively. Well, seven years of my life. Not actually more because I also got it in high school. Oh shit, that's funny. So technically, you've been a government employee. No, no, because I'm assuming that the government pays you. Yeah, the government. They, they, they say, "Hey, we 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 value that you're uh, educating our people." Well, I'm I'm technically now a Danish government employee. That is <laughs> no, you're not because the, uh, the university is not a government thing. It's 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 a private organization that has a special yeah. agreement with their. Um... Is it a private organization? Yes, all the universities are private organizations, but they have a special agreement with the um, with the government. Oh, I thought they were state authorities. No, they're not. Eh, whatever. They're still paid by taxes, though. So also voting. That is not entirely incorrect. Uh, entirely correct. You can get into Denmark. You just have to have a valid reason. <laughs> there are ways to get in here right now. I don't think I have a valid re no, you, reason. You, you, I, no, like, no. I want to go. I want to go hang out with this dude that lives there. Yeah, that's not good enough. <laughs> I mean, technically, I would be. Technically, I could write that I'd be in a relationship and get you in like that, and like it would be me who in the uh, who would be punished. Where like I would uh, like with like f like. Effectively fraud, <laughs> like document falsification. Yeah, let's not do that. No, <laughs> I, 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 see, here's the thing. I, I value our friendship too much to put you in prison. <laughs> so let's I not just fine. I don't know. Oh, dude, Have you ever been in a Danish I'm... prison? Danish prisons uh, are, lo are like are way better. Like, Danish prisons are like hotels compared to. Uh... Yeah. Whenever you hear of like the world's worst prisons, it seems like they're always in either America or some or like uh, Singapore, or uh, and then they speculate what North Korean prisons are like, which we all know what they're like. They're they're a nightmare. On well, Earth. that's that's just the entirety of North Korea. Oh yeah, that was my basic point. Was yeah. literally those words you just said. When did when did we end up? Up. So it's okay. So he's taking and sort of like from it sounds like he's has more or less uh, He has more or less gotten the concept of it, right? But he's like well the basic concept, but he, he's then expanding it into like everyone is affected by this thing Which I'm gonna hazard a guess and say like the Native Americans um, the, the tribes Native American tribes who believe this Believe this? I don't think any of them think the entire world is under the influence of this thing. <laughs> no, and you know, I think it's kind of still my my greater problem or my overarching issue with this entire thing is the very last sentence. In addition to independent researchers like myself, mm -hmm. many artists, uh, basically what he's saying is that people are coming to the truth of this quote unquote, you know, um, well, truth. Like people are coming to discover things about this by doing art i mean that's fine and good i'm sure that many mathematicians came to breakthroughs while you know in in indulging their minds in other things i'm not saying that that's not a possibility or that it even is what's going on here what i'm saying is you don't come to the truth of something by painting something like in the end those mathematicians that were doing something else when they're breakthrough came to them were in the end still doing math yeah they're still thinking about it and like like the the, the brain like it, it it's not the painting in itself that gives you the idea it's still the idea still comes from your brain the painting like yeah, painting like, something or doing something else or even taking drug like like mind-altering substances 
Yeah, like somebody, like somebody once told me I was having an argument with the someone world about metaphysics. Gone over. <laughs> Sorry. And one of their evidences, one of their evidences was an Alex Gray art piece, and I was like, that didn't. What? Your your reasoning that quantum physics affects every single part of everyone's lives is a fucking painting that some that some artist that the band Tool is obsessed with made. Like I don't get it. That doesn't make any sense to me. That that is hilarious. I don't think you understand what constitutes a proof. No, that does like unless unless the painting is a painting of all the like like of the like is this a painting of a paragraph of word that explains it? <laughs> It's a painting. Like, it's a painting re- of the person is, doing the math next to the equation on a chalkboard. This is a re. This is a research, a research paper, but painted, but printed on like a massive. No, no, it's not. No, they paint. They 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 just like they wrote it out and then they painted it like meticulously on a on like on a canvas. <laughs> oh, that's good. Oh God, that that's would be a ni- that would be a nightmare in bio in like. At least my field of biology, cell biology, because you need you need pictures. You need you would have to accurately reproduce. Oh um, my god! The um, the pictures, like of like like microscope pictures. Yeah, the canvas that you printed this fucking paper on would either have to be very large or in many different volumes. Or you would have be, have to be really good at painting. <laughs> yeah. Really good at painting is the first thing you need to be. You're not going to be able to will that into existence. Maybe he has. Maybe he has a solution for. Uh, I have no idea whose turn it is. It's not mine. I just got done reading. <laughs> I'm going to say it's your turn because it usually goes you, Geo, me. Uh, yeah, that sounds fine. To use one example, Colin Wilson in the supernatural metaphysical cult thriller. The mind parasite. Oh, so it's a thriller. So so it's 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 fiction. <laughs> first published yeah, and I in, love that. first published in nineteen sixty seven. Uh, is using the fictive power of the literary literary imagination to give living form to this virus of the mind. Wow, <laughs> that's literally just magic. That's literally just writing, like, oh, he he wrote some words in a specific order, and now he has powers. <laughs> it has the powers. You can alter your mind like a virus. <laughs> I don't know what you did, but at the end of that first sentence, somebody hit something. Yeah, I, I, hit, my, the... I hit my, I hit, I hit my, uh, uh, my uh, pop filter. <laughs> Yeah, dude, it sounded like a fucking, uh, like a noise break in a fucking horror movie. <laughs> oh, it kind of fit then. Yeah, it was like, Hong. it sounded like some shit you'd hear in a sci-fi film right before the aliens land. Um, the more I studied Wilson's book, the more I had the o- overwhelming impression that he was really onto something. It, it, it's fiction. <laughs> I.e. that he was tracking... The elusive footprints of the Pimitica. What the fuck? And then he had chosen the form of a fictional narrative to describe. Circumscribe? Wait, what? That is not what that word means. And elucidate the nature of this deadly mind virus that threatens all of us. It is as if the, as if Wilson was waking up to the psych, psychic parasites that were within not only himself but all of humanity and his activated consciousness um uh, oh his activated unconscious was using the vehicle of literary imagination to express this realization i want to look up what like i want to look up the plot oh ah hold on um wilson has bl- uh, da, da, da. wilson has blended hp lovecraft's dark vision with his own revolutionary philosophy and unique narrative powers to produce a stunning high tension story of a uh, vaulting imagination. A professor makes a horrifying discovery 
while excavating a, sin sinister, a sinister archaeological site. It's sinister. For over 200 years, the uh, mind parasites have been lurking in the deepest layer of human consciousness, feeding on human life force and steadily gaining a foothold on the planet. Now they threaten humanity's extinction. That Okay, in that case, they're really stupid parasites. Because if they kill humanity, they won't be. They won't have a host anymore, and they will die. Yeah, that's like us literally eradicating all of our food sources and yeah. being like, "Aha! Got beat. Got rid of the beast of burden." Nah, but now we have nothing to eat. They can be fought with only one Shit. weapon: the mind. Push, push, push to and beyond its limits. If you push, okay, pushing something beyond its limits is a stupid phrase. Because then it's not the limit. Um, push so far that humans can read each other's thoughts, that the moon can be shifted from its orbit by thought alone. Push so that man can at last join battle with the loathsome parasites on equal terms. Okay, I can see why this why this dude um, why this dude likes likes this uh, this book. But again, wow. it's fiction. This summer from Stupid Productions. A sci-fi that's going to tell us everything we need to know about the bounds of reality. I love how everybody keeps trying to use forms of fiction as proof of something in real life. It's like, why in the fuck would this person use an allegory instead of writing a fucking paper? The paper would make him far more famous. Unless you're Christopher Nolan. Hmm. Uh, I think it's Geo's then. I assume so. Yes. If it's yes. not loading, there's something wrong. Give me a second. Oh. My connection's a little flaky at the moment. There's uh. something wrong. We are all robots. Beep, yeah, beep, yeah, yeah, yeah. There we go. Oftentimes. Beep, beep, beep. Oftentimes, creative artists are the canaries in the coal mine of humanity's psyche. Presciently, 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 yeah. presciently, giving communicable form to what is emerging within the collective conscious unconscious of our species. Sometimes the work is so informed by the artist's unconscious that the artists themselves haven't consciously, unconsciously <laughs> aware of what they are. <laughs> oh my God. You don't no, no 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 you don't understand new. what you're making but I do <laughs> That's effectively what he's saying I'm s When an artist is bringing in something new there are usually varying degrees of unconscious of consciousness around what is coming through them as their work is the result of a creative interaction between their conscious and unconscious minds Okay what? What the fuck? Like oh my god, this is fucking amazing. Oh. I am so accustomed to writing about the Watiko non-fictionally, that means not real, that the idea of approaching it through the made-up medium of fiction, i.e. through creative art that isn't a seri as serious as non-fiction, um... Or not fake, excuse me. I meant it the wrong way. Fiction yeah, yeah. is... Uh, He's uh, literally fake. saying, I'm so used to bit to this this made-up thing being real that I I don't even understand the, the, the concept of people writing it. Writing it is fake. What, what's next? Are they going to say... Uh, <laughs> are they going to say... Are they going to say the tables aren't real? <laughs> But yeah, okay, so he goes on to say, uh, through creative, uh, he never thought to do it in the medium of fiction, i.e. through creative art that isn't as serious as nonfiction, opens up, a, opens up new orders of freedom within my soul. So basically he's saying that being able to write about it as if it's not real is making him feel better. Okay, that is not that hard. I could, I could sit down and write a story about... A world where cars aren't real and like all the implications of that. That's not hard. 
but this but, but i'm more so saying it like okay from the perspective of like uh like okay so basically what he's saying is trying to write write about it as if it's real is super stressful like that's how i'm taking it is that like I'm maybe he's is that able to <laughs> to de-stress by just making shit up and it's like dude you were already doing that <laughs> Just keep doing what you were yes, doing. There's nothing saying. any different. I don't know. No, I, I'm not saying that's what he's saying. I'm saying that's how I interpreted it. Yeah, no, no, like no. Like this is saying that it's stressful. He, he's 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 so hooked on using flowery language that like it's really hard to actually figure out what the fuck he means. Yeah, you're trying to interpret all the nonsense around it to where the words that you understand. Well, not you know, just the nonsense. Not just his nonsense. Also, like he he, his writing style is really really annoying. It's long winded. Yeah. Like unnecessarily long winded. That's like, why we like end up with hyphenated way. sentences in every single fucking paragraph. Like, he is not concise yeah. or short. As a matter of fact, I can see two hyphenated sentences within eyesight, and one of them's in the next fucking paragraph in the first sentence. But yeah, Watiko can be likened to a bug that hampers the creativity or the creative imagination, potentially killing it if it's even possible to talk in such fantastic terms about imagination. Fatalistic. Which is to say that it... Huh? Fatalistic terms. Yeah. Fatal, fatalistic terms. Did I not say fatalistic? No, you said fantalistic. Oh, God. I'm... Anyway, I Rich Evans the fuck out of that, which is to say that it makes sense <laughs> to use creative imagination as a way of dealing with its imagination killing effects. And he uses the same word over and over and over and over again. Imagination, so, so, uh, unconscious, conscious. So, so because it this thing kills your imagination, the way to fight it is to is to write about it. As if it's imagination. Yeah, so he's saying you can't lose your imagination if you try to keep using your imagination. But specifically your imagination to imagine it? Yeah. <laughs> this is so weird. It's so hard to understand what exactly is happening here. Oh, God. Uh... Oh, shit. Is this turning into like a crystal skull situation? Okay, uh, we're not getting through this, and we already oh we've God. already gotten a glimpse into what he thinks about this. I say we spent the last ten minutes or something on something else, just because I want to get like I want to know more of his weird ideas. I want to know what a biospheric dream body is because that sounds amazing. Uh, sure. Here. Someone read. I don't know. Who's, whose time is it to read? Hello? Oh. Uh, I think I've lost the connection to everyone else, so currently you can only hear me, audience. And that is Discord being very cross at me. I am not sure why Discord is currently having problems. That was strange. Huh. Well, let's 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 see if I can figure all by myself. Uh, this is interesting. What the fuck is going on? Let's try and restart this court. Okay, so there we go. There we go. Uh, he's back. I have no idea what happened. Yeah, your your live uh, your feed in this in our little 
like, yeah, no, really like is. my Discord, my Discord, like decided to, uh, to like completely crap itself. Yeah, I can't see. Uh, your little screen is no, just no, that, that you know, uh, that's because I haven't put it up. Um, that we're gonna wait when I. Uh, there we go. Okay. Now it should be up again. There we go. There it is. Yeah. So. It was kind of funny because everyone, I could see that everyone was saying that you were still there. It was like a yeah. micro ASMR. Well, of course I'm still here. I'm still streaming. <laughs> yeah, you're the one that's running it, but like we were gone. I was like, oh my God, what's going on here? All right, so what are we about to read? Well, I want to know what the, the biospheric dream body is. Okay, just remember that I have to. It's three. It's two fifty-two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're we'll, by three fifteen-ish. Yeah, yeah. We're we're ending at at two hours as usual. Yay! All right. So I let's read about Doctor Arnie Mendel. That's not a real name. It's <laughs> 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 totally a real name. I'm not that's sure. Not <laughs> I decided that that's not a real name. Fuck it. Stop me. <laughs> <clears throat> A physicist and Jungarian analyst has taken Jung's work on the synchronistic correlation between psyche and matter to the next level of articulation with his notion of the dream body. I'm gonna hazard a guess. I'm gonna hazard a guess and say he's not an actual physicist. Uh, yeah, I bet you he's. I bet you he's like a a pharmacist and he just heard it like he heard it wrong. Yeah, uh, my name is Arnie Mendel. I'm a, I'm a pharmacist. Oh, he's a physicist. Sweet. <laughs> <laughs> all right so uh where was i the the dream body okay so the dream body is more than the physical body yet includes the medium of communication it the is the body, body that is... you dream of having yeah right it's the hot you that's in all your dreams it's the hot you in all your dreams <laughs> uh, now it sounds like you want to fuck yourself the dream body is like I a dream have sex with my dream body <laughs> <laughs> it's not technically you... it's, it's not technically um, having se sex with someone it's just dream masturbation <laughs> would you fuck me I'd, I'd fuck, fuck me, me. <laughs> I'd fuck the shit out of me I wanna fuck uh, the my dream, dream body, body. <laughs> the dream body is like a dream from a higher dimension my dream, oh, my dream, body, my dream body is a big fat woman <laughs> I can uh, tell earlier you. I was I, I jokingly brought up Christopher Nolan, but it's like literally we're in Inception now. Uh, that is so uh, because he's he literally says the dream body is like a dream from a higher dimension of our being expressing itself through the world through multiple levels simultaneously. The dream body is multi-channeled. Oh my god. Oh my fucking god. Multi-channeled. What is that yeah. supposed yeah. to mean? It's a water tributary, I guess. Uh, it carries water throughout the land. Uh, it can express itself in dreams, thoughts, feelings, body sensations. Ooh, tinglies. Movements, a variety of symptoms. Whenever you get a headache, you got, you got the body feelings. Uh, addictions, relationship problems. Oh, my God, it's everything. Uh, altered states of consciousness as well as synchronistically. What the fuck? But through events in the outer world, Mendel's discovery and articulation of the dream body is truly groundbreaking. No, the fuck it isn't. And warrants our highest attention. No, it doesn't. I want to, there has to be videos of this guy. There fucking has to be. Mendel's dream body perspective. At, oh, there's another side. Um, let's see. Copy that. Put in our chat for later. Oh my god, yes. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, yes, 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 yes. When those stream body perspective has immensely powerful practical applications. Oh, it's practical. Um, for empowering us to respond to our world's world in ways that are creative and transformative. The dream body is non-local and hyperdimensional. <laughs> In that it is not bound or limited by the conventional laws of third dimensional space or linear sequential time. Oh, I guess I guess we're in the A theory of time. Fair enough. Uh, 
Not constrained by the apparent rules of our physical universe, the dream body can synchronous, synchronistically, I don't think that means what you think it means, express itself both inwardly and outwardly, and or outwardly. Which is to say that the dream body collapses the presumed boundaries between what can happen, what is happening in, inside us, and events taking place in the outside world. So it's literally, it's literally the secret. If you think it hard enough, if you think something and want it hard enough, it happens. Oh my god! Holy shit! I really hope that this is the same Paul Levi, because there's a musician who's also named Paul Levi. Well, does he look? Does he look like this? I can't really tell. No, I mean it's similar, but it's not the same. He looks like he like that. No, it's not him. Okay, uh, I, I just watched the video a little bit. No, the dude, it just looked like him in the the, the the thumbnail. But there are tons of very very funny. Oh my god, I'm gonna have to meme this video. That's just. Oh hell yes! The I'm global the shit. global dream body is attacking itself. Oh my god, yes, dude, it is going fucking crazy. I'm gonna download this on my phone and start editing this tonight. Like, I'm gonna fucking mean the shit out of this. Awesome. This is gonna be so much fun. Oh, hey, oh he kind of looks like Paul Simon and fucking uh, Peter Molyneux mixed into one. This symptom says symbol of the dream body. It's a quantum phenomenon. Well, that was enlightening, oh I guess. Oh, my God. Yeah, this dude is, is... What is up with that dude's leg? Is that water? That's water. Never mind. Yeah, it's water. I was no, like, wow, he, you he, he really isn't suffering person. from a rare, rare case of blurry legs. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I knew somebody with blurry legs that was just horrible. See him <laughs> waste away like that. <laughs> oh, shit. You get it. You get it from you know those number blurred number plates they have on TV. You um you get blurred legs from the chemicals they use to make those blurred. Wait, what? You get blurred legs from rubbing them up against the blurred number plates they have on TV. Oh, <laughs> and and you get blurred hands from fingering an Asian chick. <laughs> <laughs> no, only Japanese. <laughs> If you're making if you're making a porno with her, then yeah, sure. <laughs> the second it's released to the public, you have blurry hands. Huh. Uh, or, or either that's dig. gross water. Is that a lake or something? Yeah, it's probably a lake. It, yeah, it looks like a lake. Anyways, um, on the note. Oh shit! I just realized those are feet on top of somebody else's feet. Yeah. Wait. Yeah. That is such a weird picture. Hold on, we, we st oh, hold on. Before we leave, we have to decide what um, what what special edition this is. Ah, oh, fuck. Written and directed by Quentin Tarantino. No, uh, it should be directed or directinoed and or no, directing Tarantinoed by written. No, written directino. Mm. Um, I get it. I get what yeah, you're saying. Direct, you know, yeah, it's that meme. I saw it a little while ago. Uh, Quinton and Tarantino by written direct, you know. Yeah. That doesn't make it, that has no, like, you can't just make a foot finish joke at the very end. That's not how this works. We, don't have, we have to come up with something. Uh... uh... I honestly... I honestly would just put I love Paul Levy's work dash thing. <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. 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 <laughs> yes. <laughs> that's that's the whole title is just that. Or at least that's what I would do. I love Paul Levi's work. Dash. That Sting edition. <laughs> I forgot that we put the word edition on the end. 
That makes it so much better. Uh, help. Just want to check out how oh, to spell his name. Yes. I have. That's not a sting. That's string. I can't spell. Great. It's okay. Uh, yeah. Actually, I think string kind of kind of adds a little bit of a little bit of zing on it. <sighs> it rhymed. Anyways, with that out of the way, I'm. Um, that was that has been awoken awaken in the dream. I, oh, I, and I hope you learned I, something. I have a submission. Wait, wait. Uh, never mind. I will talk to you guys about that later. Uh, okay. Yeah, that was. It was. It was more fun than the than the beat your wife edition. Well, the 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 the, the beat your wife edition was fucked up, and I didn't realize that it would get that bad. And I'm still sorry for how depressing that episode got. You know, to be to be honest with you, you made up for it with this because I'm. If if nothing else, that quote right there will be in my head all day, and I'll be giggling about it tonight whenever I come <laughs> home. It's gonna be great. I, you 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 far and away made up for it. It's okay. <laughs> anyway, nine people in the audience. 